Hey guys, I just want to do some prayers and talk a little bit before I forget about some things. I've been wanting to do this for a little while. There's been a lot in the news lately, and just a lot of things going on in, in the lives of people around me as well that I just want to do some public prayer for, and <clears throat> encourage you guys to pray for your family and friends, and your co-workers, and people that you know in your lives, and um, <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, I think this is kind of important. It happened really recently. It actually happened last night when I was at work at the lovely, uh, you know, we went back an hour last night, and I don't even know if I get paid for it. I don't think that I do, because I work overnight, so I had to work an extra hour in a lovely time, but I had a pretty good time, uh, me and my co-worker, but anyways, uh, in this town where I live, not too far from where we work, um, actually, well, the girl that I was working with, her boyfriend called her and said um, that he asked her to call the fire department. I guess he was going to the bathroom, and he looked out the window, and he saw the apartment buildings across from him um, had the windows blown out, like there was an explosion or something, and there was, like, smoke coming out of them, so there was, like, a fire, and... Uh, <clears throat> And she was like, she didn't know why he called her and why didn't he call the fire department, but she rushed out of the the building and, and called the fire department. And I thought maybe something was going on with her family. I didn't know what was going on. It seemed like it was something serious. Uh, she left outside to talk. and So I found out what it was. And uh, so it was his apartment buildings across from her, you know, not too far from where I live, not too far from where I work. And... Uh, I didn't really know anything about it, but I guess there was like five people living in there. And unfortunately, I found out later, uh, one of the guys that was living in there, he's a customer I see at work a lot, and he's one of the customers that I actually appreciate, you know. There can be a lot of <laughs> frustrating or annoying customers, but hey, I love them all the same, right? But, you know, but then there's some that, you know, you kind of really appreciate, and, you know, it's not even like I talk to him or anything. He's an older guy, and he just seems like a sweet guy, and he comes in with his son or whatever, and, you know, he buys some coffee drinks. He likes the, some McCafe uh, caramel, like, iced coffee kind of stuff, and, you know, uh, he just, I don't know, he seems really nice. And then after I saw it, I mean, I felt bad for whoever it was, but, you know, after I even saw who it was, I was like, man... That's horrible, and uh, the police and the fire department was there all night, and people that came in were talking about it and asking about it, and, and uh, I think that it, it pretty much all burned up, and uh, so the Red Cross called, and because uh, they called my co-worker because she called in the fire, so everybody thought it was her place, and she's like, no, I'm just the one that called it in. But the Red Cross came and I guess helped them out with the hotel rooms and stuff. And I don't know about all that. But it's really great that, you know, we have a service like that to help people out. But, uh, you know, prayers definitely help too. And these people are going to need some prayers. And, you know, I don't know who all was in there. I don't know how it started. Uh, my coworker thinks that one of the people that was living in the apartments was a pretty bad drunk. And, and he smoked. And that could have been something. But who knows? I don't know. But, uh, regardless, it happened, and it stinks. And luckily, nobody got hurt or anything. Everybody got out of there. But still, I mean, I can't even imagine losing everything. And, uh, these people seem to be taking it better than, uh, what I would. You know, at least they appeared to be taking it easy, but... I want to pray for them, and I don't even really know what to pray. But, uh... Dear God, you know the situation, you know these people, and I'm very sorrowful for their situation, and uh, you know you're such a good God, and, and thank you, God, for the Red Cross and these services, and, and people who do donations and all this stuff like this, and, you know, I just feel like I don't know what I can do but offer prayers right now, and uh, just love towards these people, and um, God, just help them to rebuild uh you know, to get back on their feet and give them uh, peace and, and strength and courage to get through this rough time. I'm sure it's going to be very tough for them. Uh, and I just pray that they'll turn to you, Lord, uh, for peace through this. 
and uh, they'll turn to you in prayers and that you'll hear their prayers and assist them lord they need it and i just thank you god for all the police and the firemen and everything and then thank you that nobody was hurt and um the situation could have been a lot worse than what it was but um you help us to, to keep them in our prayers and uh, uh, just thank you God for how good you are in Jesus name I pray amen now uh, the next thing I want to pray for again kind of a personal thing is uh, my aunt who I've talked about before and she's actually been on video before when my mom was in the hospital and stuff but uh, she fell on her back like a week or two ago and she's had a lot of back and neck problems, and she's been in the hospital and had surgeries for multiple things. But she still likes to stay very active, and, and uh, I don't know what happened in this situation, but she fell down on stairs or something. I'm not sure where. Um, but anyway, she hurt her back. She fell, and she hurt her back. She had to go to the hospital, and uh, she went to a couple different hospitals, and she's going to have to have surgery. And I'm not sure, I don't remember what my mom told me about it. She's my mom's sister. Uh, she's my Aunt Goldie. And uh, just, uh, I want to say some prayers for her. And uh, this is also a girl that I know. I know uh, named Loretta, who her mom is going through some kind of cancer and chemotherapy. And I feel really bad for her. And, you know, she's very close to her mom, and then that's her main support, you know, kind of like me. Um, uh, her dad died at a young age, and she, uh, her brother doesn't really, isn't really around the family or whatever, but, you know, it's mostly her and her mom, and she's going through this, and she might have something herself. She's had to go through some tests, and I just feel very sorrowful for her in this situation, and I don't know what to do besides, you know, to, to pray. So, I'm going to pray for Goldie and Loretta, Loretta's mom. Dear God, again, you know the situation, and uh, my aunts had uh, a lot of uh, issues like this before, and, uh, you know, it's, it's getting worse and worse, and I just pray that you'll uh, give her strength through this trial, and uh, I know that she's praying and, and she's uh, coming to you for help already, and, uh, and I just pray that you'll hear her prayers and, and help her to heal fast and give the doctors the knowledge and the wisdom of what to do, and uh, you know, I'm sure it'll probably be a financial burden too, and just help her in, in every way that she needs it, Lord. And, to help the strengthen the family to get through this, and uh, I pray that she'll be uh, I'll be able to enjoy the upcoming holiday somewhat. I know that she loves to celebrate and get the family together for these days, and it really stinks that it's happening around this time. Uh, I'm truly hoping to spend some time with her uh, on these holidays, and, and hopefully we can. But uh, I just hope that uh, that she gets gets back to where she needs to be as quickly as possible and that to prevent anything else from happening before then um pray that you know if she has surgery that it goes well and pray for uh, loretta and her mom and her mom needs healing god and i just i can't even imagine this situation it's heartbreaking to hear these but uh Lord, you men broken hearts, we know you do, and, and you are good, Lord, and I know that Loretta and her mom are going to you in prayer, too, and just hear their prayers, Lord, I pray that Loretta has no complications with her that she may fear that she does, God, and we need some miracles in this situation, and just help strengthen Loretta and, and her mom, um, and give them uh, they need a, just a lot of strength, Lord. May they go to you for their strength. And uh, <clears throat> Thank you, God, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, next, I want to pray about uh, the migrant situation, which is very interesting to me, and it's uh, 
you know, for the United States here and political thing. And, and I guess I'll pray for the election, too, because it's coming up and it seems like these things are going to kind of collide sometime around the same time. But, you know, I want to pray that nobody gets killed. There's no casualties when migrants get to the border. You know, I don't know what's going to happen. But um, this is crazy. But I don't believe that we should uh, have illegal immigrants come into our country. And I know that, you know, God made the world and, you know, Men have dominion over it, but God also made, you know, rulers and kings to, to make laws and stuff. And, and I think that, you know, uh, we have laws in the United States where when somebody comes here from another country, you know, they got to come here the right way. And there are many who do and are very blessed by it. And they bless our country. But um, just to have people come in, it's an invasion and we can't allow this. So. Um, you know, it's a very hostile environment. Uh, I've been, it's one of the most interesting things in the news to me, but, uh, there's been a lot that's going on, but, um, so I pray for that. Um, uh, dear God, I just pray that there's no casualties, as I said, um, with this, you know, between the U.S. troops and the Border Patrol and the migrants and, and um, uh, I'm not certain that something's probably going to get out of hand, but God, I pray that it doesn't, that or that it'll be minimized. And, uh, you know, I don't even know what to pray for in this situation, but I pray that this, things will be straightened out, God, in the best way. And, and I pray for the upcoming election. I hope that uh, it's in your hands, God, and, and whatever happens, I pray that, you know, in the, in the future to come, either way, you know, whoever wins, whoever's elected in all these various places and positions that, uh, that the laws and the ways of this country will, <clears throat> will, uh, you know, be in, a, in the right way. Lord, in your eyes, I pray that our country will make decisions, uh, you know, based on, uh, to your liking. And uh, your hands just on these situations, God. And um, thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, uh, also what just kind of popped up in my mind is that I want to pray for, like, drug crisis. Because, you know, I know Canada legalized marijuana. I'm not really a huge fan of marijuana. You know, I've had my drug abuse problems in the past, mostly marijuana and alcohol, but I've tried a little bit of everything. And... Um, you know, I can see how people can see good in this and bad in this, you know, whether it should be legal or whether it shouldn't. But I don't think that people being addicted to drugs is a good thing at all. And that's what happens a lot. And there's a lot of people who are in denial, who are in addiction. You know, I think that alcohol and tobacco are very bad. I think that alcohol and tobacco are like a gateway drug. And, you know, they say marijuana is a gateway drug, but alcohol and tobacco are, and they're legal. But I think marijuana is soon going to be legal in the United States. And, um, you know, I've personally been arrested when I was 17 for a small bag of marijuana that it wasn't even mine at the time. I was with a couple of friends and one of them had it in my car. Basically, I was getting some gas money out of uh, taking someone to get some and we got pulled over because somebody wasn't wearing their seatbelt. And then my friend ran and we had just, we all ended up getting arrested for it. But that was basically my first night that I spent in jail and, uh, you know, now people mostly get tickets for it, and, you know, I don't think it's good to spend, you know, time in jail for a little bag of marijuana or whatever, but for me, it was kind of the better, because I took a lot of these times that I got in trouble, you know, I, I still got in trouble again and again, but, you know, each time, you know, I didn't like it, and, and I did try to to stop, and, uh, you know, luckily I've been sober for many years now, but uh, it took a while, but... Uh, but it's not even just being in jail or, you know, having to go to court or anything like that that's a problem. You know, there's lots of people that don't get caught and, and this and that, but it just ruins your life. You know, it just takes over. Any kind of addiction does. And and again, I've said before that, you know, I think it's okay for a Christian to to drink a little every now and then, but it's not okay to be getting drunk and stuff. The scripture is against that, but, you know, I can't completely condemn alcohol as a whole. But, you know, I'm basically wanting to talk about addiction and another reason why it comes up to mind is because 
I'm realizing that the town I live in, or even just the area, is very bad into meth. Uh, even at work, I found a small bag of meth, and we had to call the police and hand it in. And uh, just the other night, I saw a girl come in that had sores all over her face because she was picking at her face because of meth. And that's very heartbreaking and sad and you know, disturbing. And, uh, man... Uh, you know, it's something that's personal with me because, like I said, I've I've dealt with drug addiction, and uh, man, you know, I was never, you know, never got bad in the meth or anything like that, but uh, it's unbelievable, unbelievable, in this town that you know some customers I've known, a handful of them have been arrested recently for possession of meth, and, and you know everybody in town knows who does meth and stuff, and. It's not a secret. It's terrible, you know, what it does to them. It just eats you up, man. And, uh, drugs, not good. So, we definitely need a revival of Christ and the land. And, uh, I don't know if legalizing marijuana is a, the right step to go. But a lot of people seem to think that, and I think it's inevitable at this point. And so I just pray that um, people wake up and, well, let's just go to God. God, uh, I pray that, as I said, that people wake up. God, open the eyes of the people in the land to the corruption, Lord, to the um, depravity of addiction and what it does to them. So I pray for that girl that has all the sores over her face, God, and and these these women that or I don't know why I'd say most of them, a lot of them are women, but there's a lot of men too. But this is this one with the sores on her face was a woman, but some of the ones that I've known that went to jail are women. But uh, so that's why I'm saying I'm trying to think personally these people that I know, regardless of everybody. But I'm praying for these people that I know. The girl with the sores on her face, these girls that have recently been arrested, and even the men for meth and stuff. God, just I pray that they wake up, God, that they get a moment of sobriety, and that uh, you help them. Because I know that uh, with certain drugs and probably with meth, you know, you go through withdrawals, and it's hard to quit this stuff. It's like not only sometimes maybe people want to continue it for certain reasons. They think it's fun or it helps them to forget things or whatever or but sometimes it's just a physical addiction thing, you know, I've, cigarettes are very physically addicting, and I've battled with that a lot, and, you know, I've, again, I haven't smoked for many years now, but, I mean, it's, it's very rough, and, um, you know, I have other problems with things now, probably pop and stuff like that, but it's not, you know, it's not like cigarettes or drugs, but, uh, you know, those are horribly physically addicting, so I pray that, you know, if they get these moments of sobriety in jail, and God, I just pray that you make it easier on them, that, you know, the, help them to get through these withdrawals. Um, but I don't even know, you know, what to say. That, And you know, one girl I saw that was in jail recently, she had a huge, she had like a $5,000 bail. She was, she it was like a $50,000 bail, you know, you got to pay like 10%. Somebody must have paid like $5,000 to get this girl out, and I saw her with the same group of people that she's always been with before, that she got in trouble with before, and, um, you know, she could easily just rack up more charges, and I'm thinking like it might have been better for her to just stay in jail, but, you know, of course nobody wants to do that, but she's probably going to be doing some hard time anyways, but, I just, it's sad, man. It really is. And this girl with the sores on her face, God, I pray that she'll just look in the mirror and just wake up and, and just realize that what she's doing to herself. And I pray that you heal these families. You know, the drugs destroy families, destroy friendships. Uh, and, and, and there's just all kinds of dark stuff involved especially in some hardcore drugs like this. Uh, Lord, I just pray that uh, 
that America wakes up, that the world wakes up. I mean, Canada is now the number one supplier of marijuana. <sighs> oh. I don't know what to say. We just need to come back to you, Lord. And just thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I don't even know what you pray about in those situations. I mean, I pray that you know more people rise up and, and speak against drug addiction and, and more people will reach out and, and help with people with addiction, that there are more rehab centers built and stuff. I went to rehab for four and a half months. I've been to outpatient and inpatient, but I went to inpatient four and a half months. And it was really good. And, it, and I stayed sober for a while, but I did relapse. But I mean, I learned a lot from it and it was a really good experience, honestly. And I don't regret that, you know. I mean, obviously, if, you know, if I could go back or something, if I didn't have to go to jail and go to rehab and go through drug addiction, I probably wouldn't. But I'm just saying that uh, it was a blessing. So, you know, we need more of that. Uh, let's see what else is going on. This is already becoming an over 20-minute video. Should I go 30 minutes? I don't know. There's lots of things that you can pray about every night if you think about it. And I, don't know, I always don't. And I mean, I don't always don't. I mean, I don't always. Uh, you know, there's nights when I don't, but, you know, I should be. And it's, uh, you know, just think about it for a little bit. Ask God, you know, pray for what to pray about. <laughs> and things will start coming to your mind because there's a lot. There's no shortage of things to pray about, guys. And I pray for all you, you know, the listeners, and uh, uh, that just reminds me, there's a brother that has cataracts, and, you know, I don't know a lot about that, but it has to do with your eyesight or how you're seeing things, and um, it uh, caused some complications and maybe some pain, and God, I, I pray that you'll, uh, that your hand is on this situation, and I pray for healing, Lord, and... Um, Let's pray that this brother's uh, situation, this illness, gets gets better soon, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, I can go on and on all night. Maybe some nights I will. Uh, but then you'll hear me saying uh, a lot. People are probably tuned out by now. If anybody clicked on this video, they stopped listening in the first five minutes. <laughs> Uh, I know another sister whose grandma just died, and, um, you know, there was a guy that came into work the other night that said that his hamster just died, and there was another guy saying that his cat might be dying, that he ate something that was poisonous, and it's sad when we lose our pets, too, and I, I've got some pretty dark memories of some things with, with pets that, you know, I made some stupid decisions, and... I really regret it and uh, kind of remorseful about some things, but you got to forgive yourself and move on. <sighs> but, uh, and forgiveness, we need to forgive people. You know, uh, I've been listening to a guy named Jesse Lee Peterson lately who I really like, and I'm sure he's not you know, right on everything, but claims to be a Christian and he seems to be pretty, uh, pretty into the Bible and into God and I agree with a lot of stuff I listened to lately where he's talking about forgiveness and loving others and, um, you know, he's saying, you know, we don't have to, we shouldn't ask people for forgiveness, you know, we just have, we, or we don't, we don't just, yeah, we don't ask people for forgiveness or we don't have to wait for them to ask us for to forgive them, we just, we just forgive, that's what the Bible teaches is that we're to forgive, um, you know, we're, we, the Lord's Prayer Father, forgive us as we forgive others their trespasses. We are automatically to forgive. We are automatically to love. And uh, and he said, you know, if you ask somebody for the forgiveness, then it just gives them power over you and control, and they'll use that against you. You know, that's very true. Um, whether people forgive us or not, you know, that's on them. Uh, we need God's forgiveness, and we just need to be forgiven others. But, uh, I'm forgetting what I said here about, oh, this sister who, uh, her grandmother died. I've seen it on Facebook. That's, you know, 
She was blessed to have her grandmother live for a long time. My grandparents almost died right around the same time, you know, within a handful of years. And it was very hard, especially my grandpa. I was closest to my grandpa. My grandma on my dad's side died of lung cancer. And my grandpa on my dad's side, I never really knew. I met him like once. He was an alcoholic. He lived in Arizona. I lived in I live in Illinois, so he visited us like once. I talked to him on the phone maybe a couple times. Didn't really know him. He died in like a car wreck or something. That's very sad. When my dad got that phone call, I remember that. And uh, my dad was at the bar, and he came home, and he got the phone call, and he went back to the bar. <laughs> and he was sad, and it made me sad, you know, seeing your dad cry or your parents cry. It tears you up when you're little, even when you're older. I mean, it doesn't matter, but... You know, somebody who you look to as your strength and stuff, and and you see them fall apart, and it's like, man, that really hits you. But, uh, you know, I didn't know him that well, so I felt more sorry for my dad than I did, you know, sorry about what happened to my grandpa, really, at the time. But the person who I called my grandpa, who was like my step-grandpa on my dad's side, he was the one who I was the closest to. And, I mean, he just spoiled the heck out of me, and we lived really close, and I always went over there after school and stuff, and he helped with homework, and I watched cartoons over there with him, and and uh, he did the world for me. I'm actually getting kind of emotional just thinking about it. <laughs> so, uh, and my, my, my dad on my mom's side, I never really knew him. He died when I was pretty young, and my grandma on my mom's side, I loved her. Um, she ended up having amnesia, and she didn't really do a whole lot but sit around. Uh, she had some other physical complications and stuff, but she was a sweetheart, and I loved her, and the family always got together at her house, and we had a good time. She always watched, like, Christian cable TV, and, uh, but, yeah, she was, she was great. But my grandpa, wow. And my mom on my dad's side, she died of lung cancer. Like I said, she smoked, and uh, that's unfortunate. But I'm going to pray for this sister, and uh, I guess I'll call it quits there. It's getting almost to be 30 minutes. Dear God, I pray for the sister whose grandma died recently in the hospital. I've seen pics on Facebook where, you know, she gave her the last kiss, and and I remember the times waiting in the hospital when my grandma passed, both of my grandmas. So I was in the hospital for them. And I um, remember my dad uh, held her, his mom's hand, and he saw, he, you know, she took her last breath. And man, that's just really, really sad. I mean, to lose a parent, to lose a grandparent. Uh, so I pray that you will give the sister peace and um, just thank you, God, for this lady's life. And um, and uh, thank you, God, for the sister, too, who is very encouraging. And she has a channel of her own, and whether people agree with it or not, I'll just go ahead and say her name because her name is... Uh, I actually have to think about her name for a minute. <laughs> I don't have to actually even look it up. It's Jennifer. Um, Jennifer Collar, I think. Which I've liked some of her videos. I mean, I've liked a lot of her videos. Jennifer Collar, K-O-L-L-E-R. And so that's why I found her on Facebook and added her. And uh, she posts a lot of scriptures and good stuff. I'm, I don't get on Facebook a lot like that. But sometimes, you know, I, I click on it and I see her stuff at the top or whatever. Jennifer Collar, God, please bless her and uh, give her strength. I said that a lot tonight, to give people strength. That's what we need. We need to rely on the Lord for strength uh, because, you know, we are weak. And in times like this, they can really take a toll on us. And, um, you know, we can be demotivated and depressed. And um, so thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to end this video now. Is that enough prayers for you guys? Give you guys some ideas in your own lives about what to pray for. Of course, you're welcome to pray for any of these people or any of these circumstances. But whatever's on your heart, pray for it. Or even let me know in the comments what's on your heart. Or if you'd like me to pray for something else. Thanks for listening and God bless.